Hi friends! I'm getting my apron on. We are gonna make some keto. I gotta get my striped Mrs. Claus apron. We're making some keto toffee today. So, I found this recipe, it is not my own. I got it off of a channel called Keto Focus is the name of the channel. I will try to link it down below. She made this recipe and I'm gonna recreate it. I'm gonna do a half recipe so I can try it. So here's what you need, a pan. Now I believe she used this size pan, which is a quarter bake, quarter sheet pan, but and lined it with parchment, but I'm gonna use my silicone. So I'm halving the recipe for myself. But the, it, in here I have a half cup of butter and a half cup that's just regular butter. And then I bought Truvia Sweet Complete Brown Sugar. It, it has a little bit of molasses in it, but very little. But it is erythritol and stevia extract. You can use Swerve. I will tell you, Swerve has a very cooling effect that I don't love. But So I used a half a cup of this, packed, half a cup of butter, and a tablespoon of water in here. So that's half the recipe, and a pinch of salt. Now I use salted butter, so I just put a little pinch of salt. We're gonna let it boil. We're gonna bring it up to temperature, let it cook to get to 300 degrees. So I have my candy thermometer right here. That might not work depending on how deep this melts. It's hard if you want a thick bottom pan, like a heavy pan, so nothing melts. I guess I could take this out for now. It's gonna come to a boil. If that doesn't work, I have a different thermometer. And then once that happens, I'm gonna put some real vanilla in it stir it and we're just going to pour it in this pan and let it get firm so that is the goal here so right now i'm just melting everything down and i'm going to bring it up to a boil and then i will bring you back when it's boiling oh and we're going to top it with chocolate chips i got lily's chocolate chips i went with dark chocolate um lily's is also made with stevia and it's a keto chocolate chip. There's better ingredients out there, but they work for me. This, you know, the ingredients are a little pricey, so that's why I'm going half dope. Plus, I don't need a full serving. This is um, silicone. I think I got this at, I did, it's Tupperware. And it is, I don't know what it is. So it's only good to 220 degrees Celsius, 25 to negative 25. I don't know what that is, but I think it's like 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And then if any time you're dealing with hot melted sugar, you want a firm surface. And then this is just going to sit. It's not going to go in the oven or anything like that. So in my pan, I have a half a cup of butter, a half a cup of packed brown sugar, one tablespoon of water and a pinch of salt, and we're gonna bring it up to a boil. All right, I moved up a different candy thermometer, um, just because there's not a ton of volume in here. But I'm watching it because we're getting close to the 300 degrees. See, it's boiling away. This will happen relatively quickly once it starts boiling. So, you want to kind of stir it. I'm using one of these whisks that stirs from the bottom of the pan. If you do the full recipe, you'll obviously have more liquid than I have, and therefore you'll be good. If I like it, I will make the full batch. I just didn't want to waste it if I didn't think I was going to like it. Just watching the temperature go up here. What we don't want to do is let it burn. Um, but look at that dark color. That's what we want is this really rich, dark color. So we're at about, I think I'm at about 250 degrees, almost 250. But like I said, it will, it'll go up pretty quickly. Then we put the carm or the um, vanilla in. You don't put your vanilla in while it's boiling because you'll lose all the flavor. So you put the vanilla in once it 
reaches its temperature, then you put your vanilla in. So I'm just kind of letting this cook away. I'll bring it back once it hits 300. I'm gonna stand here and watch it. And once it hits 300, I will show you and then I'll put the vanilla and I might use a little more than half a teaspoon, but we'll see. All right, we are almost there. Uh, two reasons that you keep stirring. One, from what I understand, is it helps get some of the moisture out, some of the water. So if you keep stirring, you'll get more steam. And obviously it helps it keep it from burning. But we are about there. I'm gonna turn my stove off. I'm gonna take this out. Now I have a cup of hot water with soap in it. I'm just gonna stick my thermometer in here so it'll get clean. And I'm pretty good. I think we're right at 300. Let it get up. We're gonna let it bubble just a second longer. And I'm gonna add my vanilla. Now it calls for a half a teaspoon. Oops. Oops, I went a little over. No, I'm kidding. I meant to do that. And, oh, it smells so good. I'm just going to stir it in. Make sure that the vanilla, look at that dark, rich color. That's what you're looking for. Now, if you only have white keto sugar, you can do this with the white sugar. You're just not going to get this dark brown necessarily. And that's okay. Just stirring it up a little bit, trying to let it calm down. And then I'm going to pour it into my pan. And let it do its thing in the pan. So let me get my spatula. Yeah, I probably could have, I guess, done a whole batch of this. A whole, the whole two cups. But I wasn't sure. Now, because we cooked this to 300, you're not going to make a sauce out of this. But if you cooked it less, you could let it refrigerate it and you would get a thinner like a thin or I'm sorry like a caramel sauce all right that's in the fridge or in this fridge no Lori sink I can't bring you too close because this is hot but let's bring you over here what we're going to do is we're just going to let this sit up for a minute and because um it's a very, there's not a lot of volume in here. We're just going to let it sit for a second. I don't want the chocolate chips to drip to the bottom or sink to the bottom and melt in. So we're going to let it cool for a second till it forms a skin. We want the chocolate chips to sit on top. That's the goal here. And then I'm taking out my bigger pan. You could just use aluminum foil, but what I will do is when it, when it's time, I'm just going to cover it with that pan. My towel fell, my cute cat towel, which I probably should put away. Um, you just want it, the heat to melt the chocolate chips, but you don't want them to sink in and become one with the surface. So let's see. So we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes and then I'm gonna open up the chocolate chips and sprinkle them on. Okay, if you can see, the top has a bit of a film on it, and that's what we want. And then we're gonna put chocolate chips just on the top. Now, if these chocolate chips don't melt on their own due to the heat here, we'll just stick them under the broiler for a few minutes. But we're gonna try to get them to melt this way. As much or as little chocolate chips as you want. I feel like that's enough for me. And then I'm just going to trap the heat in by putting that pan over it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy and putting a clip on my chocolate chips. And then whilst I was waiting, oops, sorry, I um, chopped up some pecans. Oops, sorry. Oh, I chopped up some pecans to go on top. You can put any nuts or not. And then I have some sea salt, some flaked sea salt to sprinkle on top. And you're gonna want an offset spatula to evenly spread the chocolate. See how it's bent? This makes it an, it's called an offset. If you don't have one, and we all have one of these butter spreaders, that works too. You just want something that you can get down in and not get your hands in it. You want something that's 
get your hands raised. So I don't know if that's going to melt. Well, they're getting shiny. So we're going to leave this here and let it do its thing for a few minutes. And if it doesn't melt on its own, then I will put it in the broiler to get it warm. Okay. I think we're good. Let's put that in the oven. I don't think I need to uh, melt it. So what all you do, once you have it set up like this, you take your little offset spatula and you smear your chocolate across the top, right? And you just get a nice even coat across the top of your toffee. Now, I don't believe that this will get crunchy like a roque, uh, whatever that stuff is called, almond broke, almond roca. I don't think it will get crunchy like that, but I think it does get firm. So. We lick the spoon because, and then I'm just going to sprinkle some pecans on top. Nut of your choice, no nuts, whatever. You can make them firmer, finer, thicker, whole. You could stir all this mess together and make whatever you want. There are no rules. Okay, well, there's rules in baking, but there's no hard and fast rules, how about that? Okay, so we did that, that's plenty. I'll put those in the fridge for the next batch. And then I'm just taking this. This is flaked sea salt. This is actually Portuguese flaked sea salt. You don't want a ton. You're not trying to like, you know, gross it up with way too much salt, but there's no salt on the pecans. If these were salted nuts, then I would not be adding, I would not be adding, more salt to it. And I also have a, a rogue chocolate chip up here. So let's get that. Mm -hmm. See, that's exactly what you want to happen. It's just patience. You just let that chocolate sit there and the heat of the, the sugar mixture underneath will um, melt your chocolate. So now I'm gonna put this in my refrigerator, just like this. And I'm going to let it set up. And then once it's set up, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut it or break it. However you want to like to do it. I will probably cut it because that's where I have my crazy lies. But yeah, doesn't that look delicious? And I will bring it back to you and we will pop it out of this once it's fully cooled. Okay, it's cool. I'm in a different apron and I'm in different clothes. Still the same night. I just went up and took my work stuff off and this is what it looks like coming out and I'm not mad that this is thin I may keep it at a half of a um, recipe but let's see if I can cut it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. you can cut it or you can break it but for me, I feel like cutting it is better because it definitely gets the pieces more consistent and it helps me with portioning, you know, portion control for the most part. And it helps for like serving sizes too, but also it'll make it easier for me to pack it up in my container if it's a little smaller. So I will tell you right now that it definitely feels I'm not going to say softer. It's not as snappy, but it's not real sugar. I mean, it's real, but it's not real. So I think it's delicious. I think I will keep it in my refrigerator and I will, I mean, it's got a good I don't think I would like it any thicker. You know what I mean? I just feel like this is good. A half a serving or a half a recipe in that size container is perfect for me, right? So this is gonna be great if I make 
if this makes it to Christmas, that would be fantastic. If it doesn't, I'll just make another batch, right? Because that's what needs to happen. We need another batch of this for Christmas time. And if I knew anybody else on keto, I would make it and gift it. This is giftable. Do you have any diabetics in your life? Like, I don't know that they would. That's a little cooling to it from the erythritol, but the reason I like erythritol stevia is the stevia counteracts that. And the erythritol counteracts the aftertaste of the stevia. So that is my almond. No, what is this? toffee. Yum. So I hope you enjoyed and I will have some more cooking coming up. We got to get ready for Christmas. Bye guys.